So one of the most important things, your eyes. Your eyes are everything. Your eyes are like the number one form of stress to these guys. And you watch the tongue behavior, you watch all the different cues. You want to keep her flowing when she squares up on you and or she's like, uh oh, I'm cornered. You get that very defensive behavior. Okay, so what many of you may not know is that Kev actually is a snake dude. And the last time... <laughs> yeah, if you don't know that. <laughs> if you don't know that, you're a knucklehead. You're, you're last time I saw this species, we were in Costa Rica with Quetzal Dwyer. And uh, it's Bolian's python. These are probably my favorite python right here. Just, it feels like velvet. I don't know how else to describe it the way like this thing feels. It looks like velvet, feels like velvet. It is truly one of the most epic pythons you can get. The iridescence, the big head. I mean, this is just gorgeous animal. Very, uh, What's the scoop behind this animal? There's a lot going on in their brains and okay. stuff like that. So it's it's something that uh, you know we're working on, and it's uh, they're they're wonderful. They're actually very intelligent these are closely probably related to uh, the Papuan pythons okay and I'm one of the first people in the country ever to breed Papuan pythons and I bred them about uh, three times a long time ago okay but then when I was making babies nobody cared cared interesting now with this species no one to my knowledge as of yet has produced them in the United States it, it, in it's captivity. um we we have okay we have uh did, did they get finally clutch this, this year? What? Maybe. Am I taking I, a walk with this come animal? Here, come on out here. The, the lighting's better out here. Okay, we're coming. We're going on a walk. Um, go. I'm really making my time uh, oh, working yeah, over well, here, man. Come on now. <laughs> I love it. Should we good. go in this room? Yeah, you get good lighting if you want to get yeah, shot on here. Instagram. Right, let's go over here. here. Okay. This is so. This is. Did you get a this clutch? Is, this is. So no, we so we had um, a female that she had 11 eggs in her, and I I, I made a couple mistakes, and I allowed her to sit into a, a situation where she was still with another snake and every time a snake touched her, she would always flinch. So she had like um, a little ledge where she could hang her body and she was hanging her body. I saw her the day before and she was fine just sitting there. And I, I, I was unconvinced that she was fully grabbed. I thought I'd seen her ovulate and everything like that. So I didn't pull her. I came in the next day and she was hanging out this opening and she was dead. Oh. And uh, we did a video of her. We, we actually did a, a, a gross necropsy on her and she had 11 eggs in her. And the first egg towards her head had ruptured. Oh. And uh, it, you know, I, so I, I made a mistake, but I, I learned the, the basics enough where I actually was able to sexually breathe. And they were nice fertile eggs. You could see it. Wow. So we did a video, so we documented it, but okay. it's, it's just something that's so painful. It, it, it is, but and you know, it's unfortunately when you're talking about herpticulture, I mean, there's there's a there's lot. A lot They're of, always to yeah. learn. Now, look at how black that head is. It does look like velvet. It is just. Um, now, Rob Scott, he can show you a younger. That's a that's a young bull. Yeah, that's a that's so a. You see the red when they're yeah. born, and then wow, as they're look at this. Check this out. This one is just a couple months old. No way, Rob. So when they're born, they're actually all red. They don't even have a black head. I mean, that's that's incredible. I and can then even as see the red they there. grow, the, you can see the black starting to come in at the neck, and yeah. then it works its way down their oh, body. Oh, that is a cool snake, man. Um, these guys are mountainous, right? Yes. They live at high altitude. Yeah, so the black snakes, like our timber rattle snakes here, are black, yeah. generally. And so that the reason that is is so they can absorb all that solar radiation because yeah. temperatures will, people, it's so funny, uh, people sometimes will think, oh, it's from Papua New Guinea, it lives in a hot jungle. But you forget about elevation. And so pressure, temperature, there's a lot and of factors. They, they have to have a burrow system where they can go down and there's you know decaying material, but they're going into these burrows and they're avoiding probably the real surface fluctuations. Oh, and so okay. they'll sit down there like a rattlesnake will do, and then when it gets warm, they come out, they bass, they pick up what they need, and then they'll go back down into their burrow and keep on thermoregulating a little bit differently. But aren't they sweet? Oh my God, just hearing, hearing it breathe, it's just exhaling and, oh, look, go ahead up on that Akubra. Go ahead. That's a, now this is a this is the coolest snake band that you can get for your hat, man. Yeah, we always like them living. Oh yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Yeah, so just an incredible animal. Well, I'll tell you, man, this would be an amazing achievement. I wish you all the best with this species because it's just truly it's one of those uh, the pinnacle of of this bowens. Is, this is you know? one of the, the bucket list snakes. Yeah. So this yeah. is yeah, this is one of our. Um, 
big projects. We, I, I love things that like, just kind of like look like luxury to me. Yeah. It's like luxury. Yeah. I would say like Amazon basin emeralds are like luxury. Yes. I and know. I have lots of, of basins that we love and we, we have a lot of different snakes. Um, you like mangrove snakes at all? Oh, I don't know enough about them to, to yeah. like them or not. Should we go check out some mangrove snakes? Why not? Let's do Stay it. Here. Here. So I do know mangrove snakes. I've seen them before, but um, that's incredible. So this is a reactive species. Okay. So they almost think of it as like being paranoid. Okay. They're just, uh, so the cameras put out something that they really pick up on. So she's really, she, she can feel what's bouncing off her on that camera. Okay. So what I do is to try to bring them down you see, I'm touching her face. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I'm kind of like reassuring. If I let her square up on me and be just generally reactive. So one of the most important things, your eyes. Your eyes are everything. So snakes, your eyes are like the number one form of stress to these guys. So if you're holding an animal, so if it's a reticulated python, I came up with all these ideas with how to socialize reticulated pythons, dealing with wild caught reticulated pythons. And um, grabbing them behind their heads does not allow trust. So if I have an animal like this and it's getting a little bit out of hand, I do this. I everything over my head. And if I have an animal that, let's say I feel like it's doubling up on me. See this? As soon as I do that, the animal, see where it turned? Yep. So if I think, oh, it's going to come and get me. Just turn. I just do this. Keep going. I just readjust the animal. And I just keep doing this. And I can take, not that she's doing anything, but I can teach you how to take like a gnarly snake and I can work around its stuff and I can generally do stuff that a lot of the typical people are gonna get nailed. Gotcha. And uh, so then you start getting to see this glorious animal for what it is. So this is a rear fanged venomous species. I was gonna say, yeah, they are venomous from- Yeah, the so it's, uh, it's so basically you just kind of like reassure and you watch the tongue behavior, you watch all the different cues, and uh, you want to keep her flowing. When she squares up on you, and or she's like, uh-oh, I'm cornered, you get that very defensive behavior. I got long tongue flicking right now, mm -hmm. so she's doing really well. So now we're gonna show you something a little bit different. So this is Melanota. Okay. Okay, so this is like the large, classic mangrove snake, like just glorious in all ways. Now Rob's going to come over here. Oh man, Rob, what do you got? So this is Crowley. This is our Teaneg albino mangrove snake. So this is the only one in the world. No way. And look at, he just like glows. That His is color incredible. is outrageous. And uh, it's really neat because we actually didn't know this when we first got him in, but he's actually kind of translucent. So if you hold him up to light, you can actually see, see his heart right oh, yeah, there look at the this. veins. I don't know if it'll pick it up on the camera, but you can yeah, see Yeah, you can those. see it beating. Yep. Pretty crazy. Can you see that? Really wild. Holy so we are shit. trying to make more of these. This like I said, this is the only teaneg albino mangrove snake in the world. Uh, you know, one of the rarest colubrids. What, what level there. of venom are we talking about here? So they've done LD50 tests on these. So like a uh, lethal dose for to kill 50 mice, and the toxicity is comparative to like a monocle cobra. So very potent. Wow. But <laughs> they've got. I'm sorry, just. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but with that LD50, so that that is just the toxicity of the actual venom itself. They have very small venom glands, and they've got grooved fangs in the back of their mouth. So they don't have the hollow fangs like monocle right. cobras do. So it's very hard for them to inject venom, um, and they don't have a very high venom yield when they do bite. They really have to chew on you. So they're considered kind of harmless to humans. Okay. Uh, there, I don't think there's been any recorded deaths from mangrove snake bites. Usually it's uh, sweat, localized swelling, swell, uh, sweating, nausea, a little bit of vomiting, but that's it. Not, not any- uh, Could be like a hornet. Yeah. yeah. Just like people can have allergic reactions to bees it, and all that sort of stuff, yeah. you could be allergic to it, but- Gotcha. Um, wow. Yeah. And we'll just keep Tom away. He's allergic yeah. to the bees. <laughs> and, yeah. and every time he comes Peanut to my butter. house, yeah, he's allergic. I'm actually allergic to hornets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's funny. All right. Well, that's a beautiful a snake. Thing. I wish you all the best with that. I mean, it's just a big eyed, you know, really, I love the the shape of the head. Yes. For me, it's like, shaped. That's it's like a viper. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, like yeah, the one yeah. and only that we know of. That's yeah. a beautiful animal. Yeah. I also love how it, it kind of flattens itself, mm -hmm. uh, compresses itself laterally. Um, that's pretty cool. Like, and what now? Where? What type of habitat? Uh, obviously, mangrove, right? So, so anything above trees. water, it's going to eat every single thing it can probably find, which would be birds, uh, fish, amphibians, uh, yeah, fish. every everything. Uh, you know, obviously rodents and whatever. So very opportunistic. But they're a really wonderful species that I really enjoy a lot, and uh, they're not an easy species to breed. 
or uh, managed. So the, the most important thing is he's originally wild caught. We now need to, he's now sired mm -hmm. uh, clutches and now we're trying to create, you know, our first generations of heterozygous gene carriers. And we got, so this is Jacob. Hey Jacob, on, what's Jacob. going on man? We got everybody from Nerd helping out, and that, that's another cool thing that, that Kevin does with his staff is Kevin's not just the focal point of these videos. He uh, allows everyone to learn and share what they know, so thanks. What's going on, bro? That's cool. Like, so you can see the difference. Uh, that's right. Look so, at that. So that's a baby Crowley. Yep. Tell him wow. Jacob. So this right here is one of the offspring <laughs> from okay. that teen egg at Melanota. It's a cross between a divergence and a Melanota. Right. This right here is a divergence. It's a subspecies that you can find in the Philippines. So they have this nice blue and gray coloration to them and these very yeah, pronounced pretty... yellow bands. And one of the two subspecies you can find there, the other is the Lata Fasciata, which we love. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what, listen, it's exactly what Kevin was talking about. The camera, it it's, puts something off yeah. and that snake locked onto the camera. And, and you let, we let it square up for a second. Yeah. So when they square up, they're like, okay, now I feel like I'm being cornered. Right. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm being cornered. <laughs> but you notice it's not going after Jacob. Yeah. No, exactly. Because Jacob's not the threat. Yep. And it if was Jacob that. needs to worry, if he worried, he put it over his head. He knows. And he also knows if it he needs to twirl it. See, he knows I teach all this stuff to them. Yeah. Very cool. And get them. So, yep. up. Here's a, uh, thank you. And when you handle any boyga, it's really important to remember, they're not very tactically stimu or, yeah, tactically stimulated, it's very visual for okay. them. So they love the key in our movement. Gotcha. That's why I have the camera that well, And it also could have seen its reflection in so the So there's a too. big female. Oh boy. She's gravid. Oh boy. So she's usually very blue, but she's shedding. But that's you, actually mom of this. Yeah, is that the mom of that? Yep. Yeah. Wild. So she's just in chill out mode here in yep, the little the virgins. That's beautiful, man. There's so much to learn about snakes. Um, <laughs> there's so that's, much going oh, man, on. That's right. like a, that's like I know. A How many species of snakes now? Do I have? Well, no, no. I don't Are there on the planet? I don't know. So I'm really thousands this, of this thousands. This is one of the things. Like I am terrible when it comes to that kind of stuff. Doesn't interest me. It, well, it's obviously interesting to me, but it's not. I like to. This is what's in front of me. This is what I'm Got working you. with. Where some people just like I. Like I love African cichlids and I love all I love fish and I love all these different things, but I'm super geeked out by the animals themselves. Gotcha. Yeah, as opposed to just like all of the life history or right. whatever. Absolutely. So I, I pretty much hands on. Very cool. Much. Very cool. Awesome stuff, man. We saw some beautiful snakes here. The hits just keep coming when you're hanging out in nerd, so I can't say enough good things about this visit. I'm gonna sign off right bye guys. Thanks for all your help. Yeah. We're gonna sign off right now. <laughs> they said bye too. They did, okay. <laughs> check them out. Uh, you can visit them online. You can check them out on Instagram at Evil Morph God. Also on Facebook at Nerd. Uh, don't forget they have YouTube and on Twitch at Nerd. All right, and I'm a nerd and I'm out of here. Thanks for your support. Like and subscribe. See ya. Awesome, man.